Take five or so. Uh, hello everybody, welcome to the keep card flashing tutorial. So this tutorial is going to assume that you have the tiny AVR programmer that came with the kit. Looks like that. Um, if you don't, uh, a couple of things are going to change for you. I'll let you know when that happens and you should look at the documentation or tutorials that you can find for your um, specific programmer. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the code. So we go to cloner download on the uh, keep card page, GitHub page, and click download zip. Downloaded this a couple of times, so comes up as a number four. Uh, you wait for that to finish downloading. I have one prepared earlier, so <laughs> place that wherever you want. Um, it is an archive file, so you're going to have to unzip it. So I'm going to use 7-zip, extract here. And one thing you're going to have to do is that Arduino does not like um, programs that are in folders that aren't the same name. So we're going to delete that little master right there. So here is the INO file. Uh, this is my laptop, so I don't have extensions set up. Um, but this is going to run in Arduino. I would download that. You can just go and Google Arduino software. I've never used the code online thing, but uh, you might be able to do that. I would look into it if you want to, but uh, I usually just download the app. I got the Windows app, which was okay, but the installer also works perfectly well on Windows 10, Windows 8, what, what have you. Um, this should all work on Linux as well, and I think this will mostly be the same. You can just skip the driver installation, which we are going to be doing. Um, cool. So once you have Arduino set up, you can double click on the code, and that will bring this up. So um, this the code is split into a couple of different sections. You can see there will be another tutorial doing a bit of a deeper dive on some of this stuff. Um, but basically, this program is the program that runs for everything. Um, and you actually tell it what program you want because we can't fit all of them onto the device. So it's set up for Snake right now because I'm debugging that. Um, but we want Pong. So we just comment out that define with the two slashes and then we uncomment Pong. So this is how you're going to control uh, what program you put on there. There are a couple of duds right now. Conway and Business Card. Oops, business Card. Um, don't don't compile I don't think so I wouldn't use those yet but plan on adding them back in the future so you can go ahead and save that um, so normally what you do is you verify to make sure that your code is going to compile and then you can upload but uh, there are a lot of steps that we need to do before that is going to work so you can see here that uh, tinywirem.h no such file or directory um, that means that we need to add a library so we are going to go to sketch include libraries manage libraries so we use two libraries here tiny 4k oled and tiny wire m so let's get tiny wire m there uh, tiny wire m is a communication library so the tiny 4k oled uh, uses that to talk to the screen and then tiny 4k oled tiny 4k oled um, actually talks to the screen. It does all the, the fun stuff. TinyYRM doesn't actually know it's talking to a screen. Tiny4K OLED does. So if we verify now, we are still going to fail. Um, error compiling for board Arduino Yun. So we don't have the correct board. So uh, what we need to do is go, go into preferences. Ah, and so mine is still there. Um, but basically you need to add this to your uh, board manager URL section. So you can add it in a ooh, you can add it in a comma separated list down here or you can click this button and you can add it one per line. Uh, I will put this link in the description. Now this is the one I use. You could use a different one. There are a couple of different ones out there that allow you to program AT Tinies. Uh, you don't even have to use Arduino at all. Um, you can it's an AVR chip so you can program it however you program other AVR chips. Uh, I haven't really looked into that. I Arduino was easy enough for me, um, and I was I thought about looking into it, but then I realized that like I don't want I don't want to try and communicate that to other people. I think Arduino is way easier, so we're just gonna go with this. So we do need to add that board. So yep. So if we go to board and then boards manager, you can look for AT Tiny. And now that you added that extra source, we can install this. So once that is installed, you can see 
that there is another section down here for 25, 45, and 85. We have the 85, so we're going to click on that. A couple more clicks. Um, we have the 85 again. And I think that is it. Yeah. So we are using the internal 1 megahertz clock. You can increase that. I don't think you can get to 20 megahertz because we have the AT Tiny 10, not the AT Tiny 20. The difference was that the AT Tiny 10 could take a much wider voltage range. Um, so, but at the cost of not quite running as fast. Um, I believe you have to set fuses if you want to uh, increase these. And then also the uh, power consumption scales linearly with the clock cycles. So um, 8 megahertz is going to take 8 times as much power as 1 megahertz. However, the screen is where most of the power is going. So you probably won't feel that too much if you want to look into that. If you're writing a program and it's really sluggish. Um, odds are there, you know, if you're writing craftily, there are ways to, to speed it up. But... Um, at some point, you you will hit a roadblock if you're doing lots of screen refreshes and stuff. Um, so yeah, internal one megahertz. And then one other thing is we switch to, I believe, USB tiny ISP. Um, so to that effect, there is one more thing that we got to do. Um, I will post the link to this down below as well. Uh, this is SparkFun's tiny AVR programmer hookup guide. Uh, it's got a lot of good information. Uh, right now, what we need to do is we need to get the drivers installed. So if you download the USB, the Zadig USB Tiny drivers, um, if you are on Linux, once again, you don't have to do this, and the, this guide says so. Um, you can download those. I have one I prepared earlier. You 7-zip it, extract here. And then you got to install. Oh, no, you just got to run it. So we are looking for, what is it, libusb, I think. Let's check. libusb win32, yes. So you plug in your programmer, and it should come up, and you click Install Driver. Boom, now we have drivers. Um, so now the only thing to do is to, so we can verify our code, and we can see that now that we have the correct board, uh, it is going to install. I will figure out what these are eventually, but they're just warnings, so don't worry about them. Um, and so now we are going to connect to the keyboard card. So I will switch to another video where I record that process. All right, so how are you gonna hook this up? Um, if you have the tiny AVR programmer, um, I just made this little jig here. It's just female to female headers, and I put some heat shrink tubing around the ends in the shape of the mini ISP header. Um, one thing to note, I've said this a couple of times, but this is rotated 180 degrees. So if you accidentally plug this in upside down, uh, nothing's gonna happen, but it's not gonna flash. Uh, you're gonna want it with ground on the top left pin here. Um, and so how I have this set up, um, the, the pinout for this is in the tiny AVR programmer hookup guide. Um, but I don't actually remember what the pins are. Um, but I have it going, uh, green, yellow, orange, red, brown, black, and then plugs in like this. So, uh, from top to bottom, left to right here is, uh, black, yellow, red, and then, uh, green, brown, orange. So... If you, uh, if you want to make the same jig, or you don't even have to, you can just connect it. Um, that will get you going. If you have a different programmer, um, you might not have this pinout. Uh, what you might have is just like a single cable, and it might have 10 positions instead of six. You can't just like plug that in. There's not, you know, the, the normal ISP header um, doesn't contain the mini ISP header. So you'll have to buy uh, jumpers in order to get the correct pinout for that. Um, but other than that, yeah, you just make sure the ground is in the top left, plug it in, and then program. Okay, so we're back now. We're all hooked up. Let me actually hook it up now. <laughs> there we go. So uh, all we need to do, all that we should need to do is click Upload.
and there you go so it writes to the disk this is all uh, verbose output I will show you how to turn that on eventually or after this is done it writes it does a read just check and make sure that everything it wrote was good boom look at that it's done uh, so that's it that's all you have to do to flash and uh, once you get all that stuff set up you can just flash over and over again there isn't really any other setup so that's good uh, as far as for both output this will help you figure out um, if there are any problems especially communication problems especially if you are you either plugged in the card wrong or are using a different flasher and something isn't right um, so show, show verbose output during compilation and upload you really you probably only need upload if you're diagnosing um, diagnosing programmer issues but it's nice to have it on compilation as well why not so all right cool uh, thanks everybody for coming along let me know if you have any questions in the comments or if there's any extra information you'd like to see thanks